Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and my mama loves you GB here on Flosstube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. I have a new jingle. Michelle in the morning. <laughs> I didn't ask Sherry if I could pinch that. So in order to pay her back, I'm just going to say that if you ever need a Flosstube channel that is totally reaffirming of your love of cross stitch, your love of life and just generally good yarns and funny tales then you need to be watching Sherry. Um, I've met her a few times at retreats now and I quite often try and scare her, pop up on her, appear in a, a lift, um, you know, just to just to keep her on her toes. So thank you very much for my new jingle Sherry, I really like it. Right, I have got so so much to show you as you might imagine with the fact that I've been away for a week um, it was the big stitch. If you could see this table, you'd be, well, there's, there's not a table to be seen. It's just totally covered. You're probably going to need a brew for this one. Now, bearing in mind the table in front of me, this is probably the most dangerous thing I'm going to do today, which is try and drink a cup of tea with everything on the table. So, um, yeah, this is your get yourself a brew warning. It's also the daftest thing that I'm doing, given the fact that it is about a billion degrees and really quite I'd like to say I'm glowing but I think I'm just you know a sweaty Betty but there we are right I'm going to start off by showing you what I've worked on what I've started and then I'm going to talk about the big stitch afterwards so in case that's not your thing I'm going to do it sort of slightly back to front I do have a few purchases and things like that that are outside of the big stitch big purchases um at the end so if you want to fast forward to those then then go ahead so what have I worked on? I actually had to get my book out because there's like before Big Stitch, which I really can't remember, and then there's after Big Stitch, which is it's just about clinging on in my memory. So it would appear that I spent quite a bit of time before the Big Stitch working on my welcome charts. And from memory, I think I very nearly finished Welcome Winter by the drawn thread. So. I'm afraid I didn't take these out of the packets beforehand. So, where are we? There we are. That is Welcome Winter. So this would be the last of the seasonal ones that I haven't, I haven't stitched. And this is where I got to. I very nearly finished it. Oops, what have I just dropped? Oh, the beads that go with it. Let me get those before I forget. Otherwise, my snowman won't have any buttons. So I nearly finished this before I left. So there's only a little bit to do. I think there's a few more um, snowflakes and there's a bit more in the W to do. But other than that, it's all nearly done. So I'd worked quite a bit on that. And I had also worked a little bit more on the Welcome Christmas one, which isn't one of the seasonal ones, but it is part of the series. So I've done almost along to the sea. The way I work them, because of the way I hold the fabric, I sort of work all the way along in cross stitch and then I work back from the E and do all the specialty stitches and the um, long stitches and things like that, the back stitch, so that they don't get crushed. And then I also bought from Chris at the Nimble Thimble, Welcome Halloween, um, mainly because somebody in my last video had commented that they had purchased it and I was like ah I haven't bought mine you'll buy them all so I messaged Chris because it had said sold out and she had a couple more left so uh, I bought one of those now just before the big stitch when I was sorting out all my projects and I don't tell you how many projects I took I probably took upwards of 15-20 projects I worked on one I had this huge bag I carried this huge bag in probably looked like an absolute fool and I worked on one thing and the thing that I worked on is this one. I'd had a bit of a hankering to get it out before 
we broke up for the holidays. So I was able to ferret through and find it. So this is the Little Bird Quaker Sampler from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count of Weigart Winter Moon. And I am using a combination of two colours, uh, which I'm gonna have to put on the bottom because I've left the threads in the living room. You probably won't necessarily be able to see the two colours So this one at the top here is the orangey one, which I think is called chili pepper. And then the bottom band is going to be chili pepper. And the letters are in the red. So I'd done, before I went to Big Stitch, I had a little bit done at the top. The letters enough to get down to this bottom row and I haven't actually worked anymore on the bottom. So I did the alphabet and worked in the top as well. But that was the only thing that I worked on whilst I was at Big Stitch because it was no colour changes or virtually no colour changes. It was nice and simple. I could see it really, really clearly. Um, it's not too hard to count while I was busy chatting, getting up, sitting down, wandering around, generally just enjoying Big Stitch. I've literally also just got a Tesco's carrier bag there, one of their um, uh, freezer ones. And I'm just literally, everything's just going in it for now because otherwise I'm going to get so confused. Right, quick tree. Now I mentioned to you last week that I really wanted to start my Chatelaine. So I am stitching now, because I've started it, yay, um, Sparkly Swans by Chatelaine. And I've had this kitted up for five years. I know, five years. Um, my mum bought it for me for my 40th birthday and I just had my 45th birthday. So I think it's it's had time to, to fester and to just settle. And now it's time to get started on it. So I'll put a picture up in the top corner of what it should look like. Now, I'm stitching this one on a frame because it's got lots and lots of specialty stitches. It's got beads. Um, all sorts of different things and I don't think you could stitch it in hand easily. I'm not saying you couldn't but I don't think you could do it easily. So the frame I'm stitching it on is not big enough. It's not big enough to have it out totally and I will have to move it which is fine because my plan is to stitch it all and then to bead it at the end. However because I'm an impatient little devil I just wanted to bead a little bit of it just to see all the sparkly beads. <laughs> so you have to excuse my random hanging threads and what I really need is something to go behind it because it's not going to be there we go dark enough now I wish you could see this up close because it is so so sparkly so I've started in the center which is the center of my fabric but I shall move up the, um, the fabric in, in due course, because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this corner and then the swans here and then go to that corner. But you'll see this is exactly how I stitch. I get excited about new colours coming up. I can't stick in one motif. I like to try and find the edges of things. And so this is kind of where I've got to. So I beaded this tiny little bit here just because I wanted to see how the beading works what it looks like super sparkly I've done a little bit of the satin stitches here I think there's rice stitches up there beautiful absolutely beautiful I am really really enjoying it which it doesn't surprise me that I'm enjoying it but it surprises me how much I'm enjoying it because I was so nervous of it for so long. Um, I expected it to be not a chore, but just hard going. And it really, really isn't hard going. So I started this on Tuesday. And because it's the holidays, I've had a bit more time to do it. But I'm really pleased with how it's gone. I've put some of the two of the bigger beads on as well. But that's the only bit of beading that I'm going to do because I'm conscious that I don't want to ever get them crushed or anywhere like that. So 
if you've got a chatelaine don't be frightened of it get it started oops it doesn't have to sit for five years as far as i'm i know so obviously what do you do when you've just started a project that you've waited five years to, to stitch and you've got about the first 10 stitches in you plan the next one so i had a look and there are another two or three that i really really like one is the japanese garden one is the tudor garden and there was another one i'll put the pictures and the things up there if you've never been and had a look on the chatelaine website do go and have a look it is amazing i bought the whole kit from european cross stitch um and i didn't get i've dropped something else now i didn't get any customs fees but i believe that's probably more by luck than judgment so factor in that you might have to pay customs charges on them the other good thing about the chatelaine website is that you can get access to the full materials list for the one that you're interested in before you buy the pattern so you can have a look and see um what's available what you can get hold of, where you might want to substitute, whether it's worth getting the full pack from European Cross Stitch, whether you can get, you just want to get the bead pack, all sorts of different things on there. So yes, I am a full Chatelaine convert. Um, my goal is to get it done by the time I'm 50. So that gives me five years. Although I have stitched a lot of it whilst watching the Olympics. So if I could get it done by the next Olympics, that'd be an absolute bonus. <laughs> okay, so. The big stitch. Was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> if they do another one, you need to be there. You absolutely need to be there. It was in the Magnus Centre in Sheffield, which is a huge sort of science centre. Uh, I quite wanted to go and have a little poke around, actually, if I'm honest, but I wasn't going to give up stitching time in order to do it. So maybe next time I'll add an extra day in so that I can go and have a look around the Magnus Centre. Um, but on the way up to Sheffield, we decided to visit Hardwick Hall. And I really, really wanted to go to Hardwick Hall, which is the seat of Bess of Hardwick, who basically had a, um, a sort of programme of marrying them, waiting for the inheritance and then spending the money on stitching, which I can totally get down with. I'm, I'm totally happy with that. So um, I met up with Kerry and uh, Caroline from Evertote. So Kerry is Roxy Foss Co, Caroline is Evertote. Um, they come as a pair. And I also met up with Christina from Whilst Iris Snaps. Now, she's my person. She is definitely my person. We've been texting and messaging for probably about two or three years, but we've never met. And then it was just fabulous. We had a fabulous time. We shared a room. So we went from never having meet, met to sharing a room. <laughs> And it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. So I had taken a few pictures of the embroideries inside um, Hardwick Hall, but not too many. You, you can go online and, and view the, the pictures. Um, but I did pick up whilst I was there the book, An Elizabethan Inheritance, The Hardwick Hall Textiles. So it goes through, and I mean, all of this is just... It's absolutely breathtaking and the amount of things that they've got on display is just incredible. Some of it's her work, some of it's work that she she purchased. Um, there's just all these beautiful Elizabethan textiles with these cool creatures on them. You know, the fact that they'd never seen some of these creatures before did not stop them from embroidering them. And one of the things that I noticed is that she put her initials, there you go, on everything, literally on everything. So if you're ever in two minds about whether to initial your work, just think of Bess of Hardwick. She didn't just initial her work once, it's probably on there 10 times. <laughs> she wanted you to know that that was her work. So I'm totally with Bess of Hardwick on a number of different life outlooks. Um, she was just just incredible she um started to build hardwick hall in her 70s now i'm not sure i'd be starting any long books in my 70s but she was like no no i'm building this enormous hall and i think the guy said it took about seven years to um to build this enormous elizabethan mansion it's absolutely beautiful my friends had a patio going longer than that she was your girl she is an absolute absolute heroine of stitching I also picked up 
the customary pencil because everywhere I go I like to get a pencil. Although I'm a bit disappointed in the National Trust ones. They've moved to just like a standard pencil with just the name on, which I think is a bit of a letdown in pencil situation. And I also got, oops, yeah, a little pin brooch of Bess of Hardwick, which I might, when I go back to school, I'll get the DT teachers to take the pin off and I'll turn it into a needle minder. Okay, so the big stitch, the big stitch. Started on the Saturday. Me and Christina, it, it opened at 8.30 and the queue was all the way down the corridor. Now, me and Christina had decided that we wanted to go and to find big Tesco's first. So we were just a little bit late to the party. But thankfully, our wonderful table had saved us um, a seat. So I'm going to put a picture of our table and I'll tell you who's there. So Caroline and Kerry, Heather Totes and Ro Roxy Flosco, Hannah, and I'm going to put all of their um, Instagram names and stuff down below as well. Hannah, um, Laurie, Lisa, Mary, who's from Canadian Stitchery, Kelly, who is from Crossford Rice. So that was our table, me and Christina, plus all of those lovely, lovely ladies. And we had the best table. Now, I know everyone says that they have the best table, but we had the best table. Because, because as well, we were in such close proximity to other tables with fabulous, fabulous people on them. Flossy Sews and Grows was just right there. Ruthie was just behind me. Chloe, girl with the gavel stitches, was just there. And it was just, you know, everyone was in such close proximity. It was brilliant. Now, I know a lot of people were a bit worried about the big stitch in terms of how big it was. Um, and there was about just under 200 stitches there, I think. But the room was so huge that it didn't feel. You never, ever felt crowded. There was loads of space for all of your stuff. You weren't tripping over people. It didn't get really loud either because it's it's basically like a huge black room. And you might think black room, that's not say stitching, you know, brilliant stitching environment, but it really was because the lights were bright. There was a lot of black fabric around the room so it really deadened the sound from the table so it wasn't ever too loud. It was just, just perfect. And there was a huge space for food, for um, pastries, teas, coffees, lunch. The lunch was fabulous, by the way. And then the most amazing vendor area. Now, when you go to a retreat, maybe they've got one or two vendors with maybe a table each. There was probably 15 vendors, each with two or three big tables. The the I don't think there's been such a collection of um, cross-stitch vendors in one place ever in the UK. I'm gonna say ever. Um, because you could get, then go and see the fabrics, you could see the threads, you could see exactly what it was you were buying without having to try and buy online, which for us in the UK is a huge problem. So amazing. And I must just give a shout out to the organisers, to Linda, to Caroline, to Andrea and to Sammy. They really did do a fabulous job and there is going to be another one. Not next year, but the year after. So you've been warned. You've been warned. Right. What what happened at the big stitch well i'm going to show you first of all my pre-orders um because there were a lot of exclusives there that were available for pre-order before the event um so i got my lanyard i got my pre-order back so somebody's given me stuff right through the door i like that i like that i'll show you what was in the the sort of welcome kits as well but these are the pre-orders so stacy nash had done a Pre uh, not pre-order, uh, an exclusive, um, which is the British Animal Cracker series. This is Harriet, who is a little hare, and she's got the little Union Jack there. And I also got the thread pack for this one. You could get the chart, the thread pack. I think you could get the fabric as well, but I, I'm all right for fabric. So these are the, um, the threads. Now these were kitted up by Letitia, who is Corey's little shop. She has got the most amazing skills in needlework. Um, not just cross stitch, gold work, stump, stump work, anything, anything that you can think of. She's got the threads, she's got the, um, the know-how. She's got the front cover actually, and I'll put a picture of it up, of um, Stitch Magazine and has had loads of front covers. She's a dynamo, an absolute dynamo. Um, so these, whoops, 
all week's dye works are the threads for Harriet. So when I get home, I will get started on her because I know I've got the fabric at home. And my other pre-order was a Jeanette Douglas one. Now they had several different designers. I only picked a couple. Um, I think they had a Witchy Stitcher one, a Jacob one. Um, I think there was another one as well, but these are the two I picked. So I picked Alphabet Garden Spool Sampler, Spool Summer, sorry. And I didn't get the threads, but I did manage to score for one of the spools. Now they didn't have very many of these in and I just happened to see the email at the crucial moment and respond to it, which is two things that very rarely happen in life. Um, is that I see an email and respond to it that quickly. Um, so that's the spool, beautifully, beautifully made. So I need to grab myself some 36 count again, which is not a problem. And then I can stitch the spool. Now we had a lovely, lovely welcome pack as well. It had all sorts of little bits and bobs in it. And one of these lovely tins, which we had the devil's own job getting the lid off, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie. So we were there like, and then somebody just really pulled hard and it came off. So it was a nice little orc catcher. Although I just left mine, I, I just let the universe take care of my orcs, I never know where they go. There we go. And then they had some for sale as well, so I bought a ready pink one too. And then Caroline had designed, so Caroline is haystack stitching, and she designed this beautiful thing called the Cotswold Garden Octagonal Pin Keep. Now, love me a Cotswold Garden. So this is what it looks like. And it was the full kit. It came with everything that you need. And I know a couple of people have already finished theirs and it looks amazing. So I might have a go at that later on today. Fabulous. We had a little exclusive from um, Hello from Liz Matthews, which I can't show you because it's, um, it's just the chart on the other side. Uh, we also had, what have we got here? The Old Barn Stitch Company, who is Sammy and Deb. This is Sunflower Garden. That was a freebie in the welcome pack as well. Ah, now actually this wasn't a freebie in the welcome pack. This is Jacob's design for the big stitch in Rotherham. So I picked that up. And you know, it's like at retreats, things just appear on your table. So this one appeared on everyone's table as well. Stitching Shield by Be More Creative. Lovely lady, Beth. I met her at Big Stitch as well. She came over and said hello. So I think that was everything that was in the welcome pack. It was amazing. It was really, really lovely welcome pack. And then obviously we had a few talks, which is really nice. I really like the idea of having some talks at retreats because it just piques your interest into things that you perhaps weren't aware of. Now Jacob did three talks across the course of the um, across the course of the week. The week. I wish it was a week. Um, across the course of the the two days he talked about um specific type of dutch embroidery and he went through this particular area and explained how their stitching is slightly different why it is like it is and it's actually based i think on because i did buy some charts from jacob is it this one this area so this has got lots and lots of information in it about this particular girl and about this particular area of the Netherlands which is where she was stitching um province of Friesland so I bought that because he also did a talk the following day about how to stitch Frisian letters which I love I love Frisian letters and also he did a talk, whoops, 
about how to hem stitch and he gave us a piece of fabric and some um, floss to have a go at hem stitching. Well, that was beyond me, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I need to, to take a really good look at. So I know there is a video that I can go back and watch and this has got all sorts of different diagrams in it for me to follow. But I know that I need time <laughs> and a clear head to follow that. There was also a lady who did a talk um, about black work and it was actually mostly about historic black work and I have to put her name across the bottom because uh, I can't bring it to mind at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant talk about black work, about the black work that appeared on clothing and um, the tiny, tiny stitches. So using things like 60 count, 75 count, 90 count, really, really fine work. Um, and about the patterns and about how it was done. It was really, really interesting. Now, black work isn't necessarily something that I've ever tended towards, but she really, really spoke well. And it's definitely something I might have a little go at. In fact, the Chatelaine, the Tudor Garden Chatelaine, has got some black work in each of the corners. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, oh, that looks quite good. Right, what did I get at the retreat? So pretty much we're on to sort of goodies now. We're pretty much into goodies. So what did I get at the retreat? Um, the table gifts were amazing. If you've never been to a retreat before, it's quite a, a thing to take a little table gift. So you've usually got tables of six or eight which you can find out before you go to the retreat. And um, and yeah, people bring a little gift for everybody on the table. So there was just some amazing things. Um, there was a lady on our table called Lisa, who I hope I mentioned before. Um, really lovely German lady. She stitches the most amazing things and she's the most amazing sewer as well. And she made everybody a little pouch which had some uh, a, a lint roller in it and some little stickers and there was also some German candy in there which I couldn't tell you what happened to. I had it at about 11 o'clock at night before I went to bed. <laughs> so she made everybody one of those. This was from Laurie who's Laurie Sykes who is of the planner fame and she is doing another one next year and she'd included everyone a little Needlework Nomads badge and a really lovely froggy pin. Mary, who was Canadian stitchery, had given everybody a little bunny. Now she does these fabulous ones with the laser cut wood and they make ornaments and key rings and things like that. So take a look at her. This was from Cosford Rise. I'd actually asked Kelly um, whether she had any of these for sale because I wanted to find it on her, um, on her shop, but it wasn't posted yet. So I think it's going to be posted very soon. It's just this lovely glove turned into a little needle book. Absolutely beautiful. And then we have this little package of goodies from um, Kerry and Caroline. A little pair of scissors. Some needles, because you can never have too many. One of Kerry's fabulous flosses, which is called Swagger. How bright is that? I think I might stitch Jacob's design in that because it's nice to have the floss from the retreat and the chart from the retreat. And then uh, a little Canadian pin. And then a little Roxy floss coat needle minder and then these two fabulous stickers this one <laughs> i will stab you with my face and this one i absolutely love this one <laughs> that's amazing i haven't put them on anything because i need to find the perfect place to stick them because they are too too good Right, let's clear the decks momentarily. Okie dokie, what else have I got here? Other bits and bobs that I picked up at the retreat. Flossy Sews and Grows, Sally gave me some of her lovely tags. And then I picked up three things from the freebie table. Now, 
I got Mary Bovey Sampler from Stacey Nash. I got the Pennsylvania Christmas Sampler and Martha Pudsey, which I've been looking at for a long time. Now, these all came from a lady called Debbie Williams. Now, Debbie, I tried to find you on the Facebook group for um, Big Stitch, but I couldn't see your, your name anywhere. Um, these are absolutely beautiful and thank you so much for putting them on the freebie table. I would love to offer you some charts in return. So either charts from my collection that I've got that you might want or charts um, from that I've designed. I'd love to pass on some charts since I picked up three of yours. So please do drop me a message. If not, I will try and send a message via the Big Stitch organisers because they'll have your email. So I'll try and I'll send them a message and get them to send it to you. So Thank you for those. The, the freebie table was amazing. People were really, really generous. Um, I didn't I didn't have a look at it till probably gone lunchtime on the first day. So the things that must have been on there were incredible. Now, I love the Primitive Hair. Love, love, love the Primitive Hair. And she had a beautiful stand. Um, and so I picked up a couple of things from her. Now, I have a real thing about Anne Boleyn. So I picked up the Anne Boleyn pins. And I also picked up the Boleyn linen. Now this is, is a 30 count, if I remember correctly. I think it's a 30 count. And it's upside down. No, it isn't. There we go. And you can smell, you can smell it's coffee dyed. So it's printed on and then coffee dyed. So I have to find something super special for that. I love that. I got a couple of things from Rachel, who's the talking dog stitcher, because I wanted to, to buy the rest of the threads that I need for the Blueberry Ridge season. So I've stitched the eight, not April, August one. And I already had the blue floss for the, the winter one. And then I picked out two other threads. Now, a lovely lady called Justine, who was sat just by the table, um, off, just behind me, had started the Blueberry Ridge ones and she was interested to see what colours I'd picked out. So I showed her the two colours and I said, oh, I've got the stitch with me. So let's see how they sit together. So I got out my autumn. I got out the elderberry that I'd already picked out and then I got out the other two flosses that I'd picked out and she just went deathly silent <laughs> and I just went to her they don't go do they and she went nope <laughs> it was like I had never ever thought about colour before in my life so I'd I'd got this one plus like an orangey one and then I'd gone for a pale pink and like a mint green and together oh my god because I am planning on sort of finishing them together jeepers creepers it was horrendous <laughs> so i kind of went back to rachel with my tail between my legs and i went i've got the wrong ones and she's like fine just swap them swap them so i then switched to marigold and also to spruce for the spring one now i'm not as confident on the spring one i think it probably needs to be a bit more limey green but we'll give it a go we'll see if not i, I have no problem stitching with that on something else and then I also picked up Yule, which I thought was great. I know Laurie picked up this one as well. So there was those. I also got this one from Romy's Creations, which is a two-part pillow with a skeleton on it. That's fabulous. I picked up a couple more of Jacob's charts. Now, one thing I didn't say about Jacob is that he had brought with him loads of the originals absolutely loads of the originals most of the charts he had there he had the original which was just for somebody like me who is just obsessed with looking at antique samplers it was fabulous it was fabulous so i picked up this one hold on to your socks because he had the original there and i could see the original I li i've always liked this one but i never really quite got it and then i saw the original and i was just like it's fabulous and the original is actually stitched. It's almost like, um, I'm sure it would have been a red, but it's faded to a lovely pink. So, and on quite a dark linen too. 
it's absolutely beautiful i don't know whether he's got a picture of the original in here no and then i picked up this one put a bird on it because i'm currently stitching a jacob quaker that i haven't finished so another one is obviously what is required i just love this one really really pretty beautiful right what else have we got here um there was a stall which had some older kits some older charts and some actual antiques for sale um i think they were dutch and i can't remember the name tammy's tammy's treasures i think so i picked up this one which is called the Grau Mill Sampler from Threads Through Time. And it's got all the flosses and the fabric. The fabric's a bit dolphin friendly, so I'll probably stitch it on something a bit smaller. Um, but I really liked the style of that one. And then I got a good Hasif Merry Christmas. And also Elizabeth Whip. Oops, 1826. So that was nice to find. I wasn't expecting to find a store that was selling older, older charts. And that is everything that I bought at the Big Stitch. But then I was given so much stuff. It was my birthday on the Sunday. And quite honestly, obviously, aside from friends and family, I couldn't imagine a better place to spend my birthday than surrounded by stitchers, talking about stitching, doing stitching. It was just fabulous. Now, as I said, I shared a room with Christina, who is whilst Iris naps. Now, she looks really sweet, doesn't she, on the telly? Yeah. The first thing she said to me on Sunday morning was, happy birthday, you're closer to 50 than 40. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> but then she did give me the most amazing gifts. So she gave me a beautiful tin with lovely chocky bickies in it, some of which are no longer there. She knows I like a tin. Ooh. And then, now, stitchy gifts are the best gifts, and she had stitched this for me. A spool with a tomato on it. And she's done her fabulous lacing at the back, which she's really famous for. If you ever buy any of Christine's spools, she'll give you the tutorial for the lacing. It looks amazing. Now she stitched this on 20 count black Ada, which she said is one of her favorites for stitching on black. How cute is that? How cute is that? How lucky did I feel? And then she's also included a pin, um, strawberry, it's not a strawberry, is it? Tomato. <laughs> It's my opinion. She said she loves a themed gift. So that was from Christina. Absolutely fabulous. I had some lovely chocolate as well. Look at this, this fancy chocolate. Ruthie from Crow's Feet Stitching. And now I had a couple of gifts from Hazel. Now, if you've been to a retreat with Hazel, you'll know Hazel. She's such a lovely lady and she goes around just giving out things that she's made literally the whole day or the whole two days. Um, now, these weren't particularly for me for birthday, but she had made pouches for everyone. And then she came around the following day giving out these beautiful little pin cushions that she'd made. Absolutely beautiful. As I said, if you've met Hazel, you'll know Hazel. She's she's such a lovely lady. Um, lovely lady Melanie had made me a little pin cushion from what I think is fabric from Hands Across the Sea. Beautiful. So Kim, I met this lady Kim. Kim is just amazing. She'd contacted me before... Um, the big stitch asking if there was anything she'd like me to bring from her to bring from the states and there wasn't anything specific and i but i had commented to her that we found it quite difficult to get brenda gervais charts so she had bought lots and lots of brenda gervais charts to give out to fellow stitchers to her table mates and she let me pick one um it's this one which i actually hadn't seen before which i can't wait to stitch so thank you so much to that, Kim. And I know she's got um, 
we've got friends in common. Now, I, I use that term as in the best way. They are my friends. I've just never met them. <laughs> but I know we've got people in common that we sort of speak to and, and converse with. So she was absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Claire from Cotton and Clay had given me these things and she's got a YouTube channel herself and she makes, sorry for the, she makes these fabulous scissor fobs and thread keeps. So she'd given me some of those. And then I had this wonderful gift from a lady called Caroline and it was wrapped in this antique paper with antique ribbon. And I think this is one of those things that makes like a, a piano play, um, like a self-playing piano or self-playing harpsichord or whatever you call it. I might be totally wrong and I don't know what the name of it is, but I think that's what it does. And lovely little pouch with a lovely note in it um oh here we go piano roll music sheet yeah, yeah. so beautiful and she had made me this fabulous little reel with a tomato pincushion on the top just amazing we have the most talented people in our our groups stitches are the best and then what else have i got a lady called sue had bought me a couple of these oh it's the dog um and she explained that she'd used them for mounting sort of smalls on sort of flat back smalls to sort of lift them up in amongst your collection so that they stand out a little bit better, which I thought was a great idea. So she had given me those. Lovely lady Jenny had given me some Mrs. Seder silks to try, which are fabulous. I have had Mrs. Seder silks before, but not for a little while. So those are fabulous, thank you. Oh dear, what else have we got here? I've buried things. Now, Chloe, girl with the gavel stitches, had got me some fabulous scissors. And then Justine had made me a scissor fob. And then together, they just work brilliantly. Same colours, looks fabulous. So thank you, you two. And then my lovely friend Chris, Chris Hindle, she had... She knows I'm one for a multiplication sampler, although I've not stitched one yet, but I need to get around to it. And she had asked me if I'd heard of the Eileen Bennett one, and I hadn't. I hadn't even heard of her as a designer, um, more for me. But it's this beautiful multiplication sampler. Now, most of that middle bit is over one. So I think I may use the, the fabric from the other kit that I bought to do this one, because I think it needs to be, for my own sanity, at least a 30 count. And then Pauline from Sobe Bags had given me this beautiful bag. She'd sent it to my house. I just missed the post on the Friday, so Chris bought it down when he came down on the Sunday. How fabulous is that? Witches in front of barns. So thank you so much for that, Pauline. That was lovely, absolutely lovely. Flossie Sows and Grows had bought this book for Ness. They'd been to Japan and really, really enjoyed it. And she'd seen my video where I said that Ness really wanted to go to Japan. So she bought this for her. And then a lovely lady. Now I'm going to, again, just show you her name. Because if this is you, please do drop me a message. I think you're the lady that I spoke to on the Saturday. And then the bag just appeared on the Sunday. So I think... I think you're the same person, but if this was you, who'd signed your name like that, oops, and I, I didn't speak to you on the Saturday, please, please drop me a message, because this was absolutely fabulous. She got Ness a beautiful tin, 
which had a big ball of wool inside. Now Ness has just got into finger knitting, so she was delighted with this. And it had some sweeties in it. And so it was so so kind of you all to think of Ness um, and, and bring things for Ness. So I really appreciated that, thank you. And if, if that was you that I spoke to on Saturday, then I know we spoke, but if it wasn't you, please then, please do drop me a message. And then I had this lovely little pouch as well with some soie d'arge thread, some little bits of uh, fabric, I can't even speak, and a little tube of buttons and knickknacks and things like that in. So I am just so grateful to all of you who took the time to speak to me on my birthday, to say happy birthday, to bring me a gift. It really has to go down in sort of like top five birthdays of all time. It was superb. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And apologies if I've missed anyone's name or got the names wrong or mixed them up. The trouble is you speak to so many people and I started jotting things down really, really sort of diligently. But then you get up and go from the table and then something's arrived and you don't necessarily always see the person who brought it. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. We then went to see Gifford Circus on the Monday. Fabulous. You know I love a Gifford Circus. I'll probably put a couple of pictures up. Um, it was as fabulous as ever. And it was called Avalon this year. And I just loved the graphics for Avalon. So I picked up one of the tea towels and I'm going to make that into a project bag of some description. I don't know quite how yet, but I love it. I just actually really want to stitch this image at the front. It's just amazing. So I grabbed that. And for those of you who know my love of Christmas baubles, last year they had done a Christmas bauble and I didn't get one. And I was really sad that I didn't get one. And they had some left over this year. So it's a 2023 bauble but that doesn't matter because we went last year as well for Gifford Circus and it is sign written in the circus tradition now all of their wagons all of their old wagons are this uh burgundy and turquoise coloration and it was done by Jess Grimsdale so I'm so pleased that they had those now my other thing that I um had done that um, I put up onto Instagram was Ness and I and um, Mum had gone to Melon Gwyn, which is a local wool mill um, near us. And they had got some wool samples. So I picked up quite a few. Now I wanted to share these with you because they are the most beautiful weaves. Now I folded them stupidly. I love Welsh wool. I've got some designs based on these Welsh wool patterns, which I should release at some point. Um, but they all have names and they all have specific origins. And they're pretty much always, always, always double-sided. Or you could use them double-sided. So I got these for finishing all of these things that I need to finish. I just thought they'd be brilliant for the tops of drums or even the sides of drums but to, if you'd get a chance to go some of them are almost like double thickness this is almost like a double thickness one um if you get the chance to go to Melanchogwin it is really fabulous I'll put the details in the notes and I know I need to do my show notes from last week as well Now the blankets they make out of these are super expensive. You're probably talking for a king size, nearly 500 pounds, if not a little bit more. But they are absolutely beautiful. So I picked up those, they sell them for six pound for a hundred grams. So basically they work, it works out about a pound a piece. So they are well worth grabbing if you go there. And then the only other couple of little bits I've got to show you are my threads of the month from Classic Colourworks 
through Lakeside Needlecraft. So this is a very pink and, pink and green selection. So we've got Prickly Pear, Prairie Grass, Pollywog, Poblano Pepper. I love that green. I really like that one. Plymouth Rock, which is like a grey purple. Plum Paisley. Pixie Dust. Pink Posy, which is a really bright pink. Pink Champagne. And Pine Needles. Whoops. So I'm into the P's for that collection. I started at the A's and I'm into the P's. And then, oh, that's where I put that. This is the Fox and Rabbit for this month. This is called Sandcastle, which I get as a 36 count linen. Um, there was a message from Fox and Rabbit if you're in the club. They are away teaching at the attic in late August. So the fabric won't be with us until probably the beginning of September at the, the earliest. So um, there was the option to suspend your club if you wanted to, but you might as well just wait. <laughs> right, that's it from me. I'm conscious of the fact that I didn't do a freebie this week, but I will do two next week. I just had so much to share with you, so much to show. I have had probably the best two weeks, stitching, birthdaying, big stitching, that you could ever imagine. So thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Take classy stitches.